stop me from here. And this girl was very excited because she was going to finally get to meet Jamie Markey because she was also going to be at AX. So now she's let this psychopath know where she's going to be. And she's like, I'm going to meet you in your autograph line. Well, there was only one penny to stop in the autograph session. So this guy, who is the dumbest guy in the world, found her, because he had been looking at all of her pictures online, found her, stopped her, did whatever, and waited till she went to the bathroom, which is creepy, because he followed her to the women's restroom, like, waited till she came out and was getting a drink of water, called her by name, and when she went to turn, he downstruck her, like punched her, and then, like tough guys do, ran. Ran for the hills. I can only hope that... <laughs> Very scary. But here's a reoccurring theme. When stupid people break the law, what do they do when they get on the internet? They brag about it. This guy started tagging her on Twitter and saying, Oh, be glad that I couldn't hit you again. Like, hashtag whatever, you know, like, bad girl. Here's something that most people don't know. Guess who make up a majority of Twitter's security? Cops. They're white hat hackers. Uh-oh. These are hackers that hack for social justice and right in the world. Really bad, because admitting that you cross state lines to commit a crime is what? A federal crime. So, the, the Twitter security team start chasing this guy. Like, and as soon as he deletes one account, a new soft puppet account will appear. Believe it or not, guess who did more to call this guy out publicly? Josh Greeley. Any of you that are voice actor fans, he's, uh, he's, he's in Attack on Titan, he's in Bucket Test, but more than anything, he's a huge brummy. Like, you, sir, are an idiot. These following accounts are the new blah blah blah, for, and he started naming the sock puppet accounts and calling him out. He's like, no brony would ever break bread with you. He got really serious about it. Well, the funny thing is, other bronies started joining in. Yeah, F you. Piggy Pie would say F you if she was here too. Like, <laughs> and it got to be funny because all of a sudden, people that were afraid to speak up to that one moron in the crowd, they ran him off the internet. He's not on the internet. I've always wanted to know whether the Twitter guys ever made life real hell for him. I'm sure they did. I'm sure they turned his name over to somebody really important. But, uh, like, so, I'm, I'm almost out of time. Damn, I've got ten minutes to wrap this up. Okay, so I do have time for this one last story. Uh, and here's the thing. I'll tell this story first before, or I'll, I'll wrap this panel up first before I tell you the last story. Um, I've had a lot of friends tell me, look, why do you care? No harm, no foul. Why do you care if Italia fans grew up? No harm, no foul. Why do you care that Homestuck fans annoy other people? No harm, no foul. Did you know that like there are conventions in the States that will not allow Homestuck panels now? Because of things like that. There are conventions that are actively seeking to do away with the Ask a Nation panel. Because of that. Because people act up in hotels, there are convention Hotels that have now told conventions, you're not welcome, because people get too turned up and do things like, ugh, poo on the sofa? Yeah, that happened. Poo. Like, poo, really? Because uh, finger paints were so expensive. Uh, but these things have caused problems for other conventions. Well, so if we just do whatever we want and don't care about each other, then we're really not the good generation of fans that we think. How many, are there any old school fans in here, like old, old, old school fans? How many of you remember when it was just awesome to go to a place and there were other people that liked anime? Yay! Even if I hated Gundam, I can tell you that my Ava could kick your Gundam's ass and we would be entertained by that conversation for hours. That's what fandom has always been for me. And like, more importantly than anything, fandom's always been a place where we can go, no matter how stupid we or no matter how dumb the general public around us feels, this is the one place where everything makes sense. This is the one place where we all get along and all take care of each other. And that's why I do these panels, because I work for a convention that our rave got so big and so out of hand, that now it's at a nightclub four blocks away, and you have to pay 15 
$15 to get into the rave because the con and the hotel don't want to deal with it anymore. So, I'm going to tell you one last story, and it has a happy ending, which is always hard to do this panel, because I'm like, oh, we're just going to hell in a handbasket, aren't we? Uh, but it's a black butler story, so you know it's going to be a little crazy. Uh, now, I'm going to probably butcher this character's name, too, so black butler fans, now's your chance. Uh, there was a young girl in Southern California that went to a convention, and she decided, she's small in nature, blonde hair, she was... Black Butler fans are already giggling because they know what she's going to dress as already. I'm going to try to say it, Aloise. Is that right? Ish. Somebody's like, eh, that's a good try. Yeah, I like that. I was like, oh, you gave it your best shot. Well, that's fine, but you also know there are plenty of people, even within the fandom, that hate that character. It was her first convention. Her mother helped her make her costume, and so I, I haven't seen it, but I've heard it was very cute and very, very cool. There were a group of Black Butler fans at that convention that hate Alice. I love you every time, like, eh, sure, sure. I love it. Uh, so they decided to terrorize her the whole day. They put, uh, dumped a drink in her purse, or jumped a drink in part of her purse. During a panel, they went through her purse and stole things. They put food on her. When one of them pushed her down the, it's like a three-step thing, pushed her down the stairs, that was it. She called her mother crying, and she said, I want to go home, and she left terrified. Terrified. She left an anime convention terrified. Now, moral of the story, what do dumbass people do on the internet? And in this case, they went to somewhere that has no drama at all. A place called DeviantArt. No drama. <laughs> I think the only place that could have been better would be cosplay.com. Uh, but they proceeded to tell how they followed and tortured this girl all day long and made her feel uncomfortable and unwelcome. Here's the cool thing about conventions. We have all these little departments that people don't think about, like, huh, registration. In the States, the way registrations work, it's not a ticket system. You register to join the con and you give them your name, address, your everything. So with a little detective work, now someone of course screencapped the, the DeviantArt post and sent it to the convention in question. Went to the con chair, the con chair handed that over to registration, and they proceeded to go on a witch hunt for these three girls, specifically. And they found, they found two of them, and I love that one of them rolled over on the other one, like, no, her! <laughs> Within just a matter of two weeks, they had all three girls' names and whatnot. They not only banned them from that convention forever, they also got them banned from all but two other conventions in that area. Like, you cannot be a fan here in Southern California. Congratulations. More importantly, and this is what's so cool about this story, they also found the young lady that was dressed as Alice and wrote, the director of the convention and the, I think the treasurer wrote a message, or maybe it was guest relations, I can't remember, that said, uh, dear so-and-so, <coughs> it has come to our attention that while you were here at our con, you unfortunately ran in with some, a group of people that do not represent who we are at all. Uh, while we can't do anything to change what, ha what has happened, we want you to know that we are better people than this. So if you're willing to, we would like to invite you as our fan guest of honor next year. Your room will be paid for, your bath will be paid for, and we would love it if you come in your costume. So like, I will never tell people, like, you have to be a fan this way or that way. That's like saying you can only eat cake this way. Sometimes, late at night, you just have to eat it with your hands. It's, just, it's the only way to get the cake in your mouth fast enough. Uh, likewise with anime, there's, there's not one way to be a fan. But the one thing that we've always had for each other that is so cool is we've always had respect for each other. And we've, all, we've always taken we's, we's, we's always taken care, care of each other. We've always taken care of each other. And if we don't look out for each other in the places where we do these conventions, we won't be able to do them anymore. And I don't know about you, but I got many more years of nerdiness ahead. So 
Anyway, uh, while the panel is not called I Hate Your Fandom, but I think it's hysterically angry, uh, thank you for coming to the Wire Fandom Sucks panel. I think you'll all agree that all of our fandoms suck just a little bit. But if we can't laugh at ourselves, we can't laugh at all. So thank you guys. And speaking of laughing, there's an 18 and up panel in here in just a moment. So I'll see you guys. <laughs>